Hello. Hello. It's definitely like a time tat day because I haven't. I don't know that it'll change much. You look great. Wake up. I felt terrible all day. So day one twenty five, um, is where we are. We're at on our two thousand twenty four vlogging journey. Welcome to our vlogging journey. Vlog. Yes. So we haven't got any new information about our adoption, of course. Um, we just ate chicken wings and corn and rice, and it was really good. Thank you, Jeremy, for cooking again. Peas. Peas. I didn't eat the peas. The kids ate peas. Yeah, one Jeremy had beans. One child. I love like a beans and rice and corn. Because we're poor now. So. A little bit of soy sauce. Yeah. It's delicious. God bless Jessica. She cleans her house for us um, when we are living in Florida. And she, like, I didn't give her that much notice even. And she just, like, gutted our house. Like, gut cleaned it. And she sent me pictures of it. And it looks so good. So we're hoping for good renters. The renters better leave our Legos alone. Because I couldn't get to the Legos. They will not transport to a closet. But they're on a shelf behind something. So they shouldn't have any reason to mess with it. But I will be so sad if they do. <clears throat> the pictures just made me really homesick. Yeah, it looks like a brand. And then there's like, well, do we just list it? Like, can we just sell it? We're really not supposed to sell our house because then we have to update our home study, and that's a problem. Well, what they don't know won't hurt them. So, um, so yeah, we're officially like open to fundraising again. Um, Fill the box is going to our house Monday to get a load, and they're going to our other, our other contacts and graciously picking up stuff for us instead of making us collect it. And we really appreciate that. We really appreciate Jennifer at Fill the Box for all of her hard work too. Um, and several other families have started doing Fill the Box. The Davenports are doing it. Um, the Whitney family has somebody doing it remotely for them because um, they live in Hawaii and I don't think that's on any other routes. <laughs> but they have gotten going and we're trying to, and the Sauls family, Betsy Sauls. And so if you guys live in North Carolina, Tennessee, um, or wherever the Whitney, the Whitney's have family all over, so they're probably Georgia, doing. yeah, Georgia, yeah, I think yeah. so. All the so southeast except for um, so just just yeah, <clears throat> if you want to do a fill the box textile run, so we won't be able to keep doing that when our house is rented. We don't obviously expect our renters to jump in. I mean, they should. Have. So we got it all ready to go. We got to get the pool screens fixed, and then we'll get renters in there probably fairly soon. I hope so. so one of our our light oldest Siberian daughter turns eight in three days. So we're gonna go to the orphanage on Monday and Tuesday of this week, and then we'll probably just maybe go on Thursday. That sounds good. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. We're gonna go to the Ministry of Gender a lot this week too, and just beg ask please. them our options too, because I mean we don't have any legal rights to our kids, and because of where we are in the process. So we need to know what their advice is to us for their child's will bring. The thing about Liberia is they don't have like a, like they have the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection Department, but they don't have like a child welfare budget. They don't have a child welfare like de dedicated section. Um, and more than 50% of their population, or like 46%, I think, or 40%, it's a huge chunk of their population is 15 or under. And they don't have a lot of elderly here because <clears throat> mostly because of the war, and then it's difficult. Health care is difficult here, so it's difficult to survive to be older in, in Liberia. Um, I am proud of Liberians, like the adult population that is here, that they were children during the war, that are in their you know, 30s and 40s now, they were children during the war. And this, so they remember the war, so they're hesitant to start conflict with anyone, specifically the U.S. government. Um, and I get that. Um, they've done a good job, you know, they're, they're thriving, you know, even today, like at the Tropicana, the weekends are always a little busier and there's a good crowd here. You know, they got to pay $10 to get in. I think it's $10 for adults, $5 for kids. They got to pay to get in and celebrate. And the place is usually packed on the weekends. Um, and that's good. You know, it's good that they're learning to enjoy their lives and it's good. You know, thank you, um, to those people that gave us phones to our friends here that received the phones. We're really excited. They were. It made a huge difference in their life. So <clears> that's great. Um, and our friends at home, like, I feel like I keep texting Paige and Tia asking them for extra favors. Tia's got to go to the bank for us or Paul, one of them's going to the bank for us. I've texted Paige to take keys to Jessica to stash more stuff when she's cleaning our house. Like, I feel like without, 
our friends, you know, helping us. And then Jessica, she cleaned our house and she gave us a great deal on cleaning our house. We appreciate that. She should, she should totally charge more. And you guys know that if, if Jessica helps you or she's friends with you, you all know she should charge more. But she doesn't because she's gracious. So, um, but she found some, I'd forgotten about like two entire drawers that are essentially junk drawers. But they got kids toys in there. They got playing cards. They got stuffed batteries, all this stuff in there. I just literally forgotten about them. And so I was like, oh, and there was some other stuff that I'd forgotten about, but mostly everything was pretty much done. She just had to clean it. But I mean, our house, you know, it's big. So it is, um, hopefully we'll get a good, good set of renters in there that can hang out for a little bit. Um, Jeremy's pretty frustrated with the whole process. He's just mad. He's mad at Liberia, he's mad at the U.S. government. We can't really figure out what the legal path is here. And we can't really figure out what the delay is. We know it goes back to the police, but we don't really know what their problem is. Um, we hear rumors of things and, and like, you know, I try to share all the information we have, even if it's sort of like hearsay, but you know, we've had so many conflicting, so much conflicting information over the last <clears throat> two weeks that I, it's not worth repeating. It's like living in a riddle. We have heard that the um, AFA, like maybe the other orphanage is getting some progress. Maybe we are too. It's hard to say, but we've heard that, that we've heard positive things. So we don't know. We hear like, the same positive things every week. So. We do. And so, I don't know. Take I'm really. Once. But we have heard also that no adoptions are going through right now. And that's not a rumor. That's just fact. It's like, there's just this hold on all, even people that aren't in trouble, they aren't do they aren't processing adoptions right now for anybody. So, it's just sad. I mean, adoption is an excellent model of the gospel. It's the gospel of, like, living in our living room. You know, it's choosing choosing something, choosing someone, not because of any power that they have or anything that they've done, but just because it's the right thing to do and they deserve a second chance and you just want to give it. They don't owe me anything. Same way God didn't owe us anything. And Jesus' sacrifice for us was not about our worth, not about our what we could bring to the table, but just a gift. And that's what adoption is as well. Um, we didn't expect Africa to be easy, but we did not expect for it to be this hard. Um, so we're, I mean, I've been telling my friend, you know, we're coming up on um, 81 days living here. So... Once we get to that 90 day mark and we don't have custody of our kids, we get into some scary financial situations. That's why we're going to rent out our house so that we don't lose it. Um, but even renting out our house, we still are going to have to figure out a way to create income or do more fundraising or both. <laughs> so if you want to buy some noonday stuff, they're still having a half off sale for a few more days. Mother's Day, um, you need to order tonight or tomorrow if you want it by Mother's Day. Um, our adopt together, um, link is called adopt faster, but it's a bitly link on our, on this description. You can click on there if you want to give us a tax deductible donation, if you got donations you're going to give to somebody, you know, why not us? Um, I feel like we're on an island. It's like, I think the Smiths and the Bruces and all the adoptive families that are invested in this agency. I feel like we are the only people here fighting and yeah. that's what's so frustrating. Like no government entity, there's no... Can't get a lawyer involved. Help. Lawyers here, either there's one lawyer that's helping, but he's helping, but he hasn't been able to get much done. I mean, he's gotten information for some of the other families. Um, we've not been able to speak with the lawyer for our agency. Um, we've asked about that, and we've not been able to do that yet. It's just crickets. It just which we're like pretty frustrated about. Nobody cares. Um, so. I don't know that the lawyers can do anything, but it would nice to be nice to be acknowledged by some of the legal teams here. We didn't personally hire a lawyer because we're. We don't have, I mean, we're not in it. We don't have a case history report signed. We don't have any legal standing. Those those right. are people that do have a case history report signed, I think, felt like it would benefit them to hire a Liberian lawyer to try to help facilitate and represent their rights. And I agree. Um, we're just, we're not there yet. So, we, you know, hiring a lawyer isn't really going to help us um, because we don't have any legal rights to our kids. When the case history report is signed, you still don't have legal rights, but once the case history report is signed, there's nothing that should be standing between you and making a court date. Um, but that's kind of the gray area that nobody will really answer. If you've got a son, because they don't think that they'll be able to immigrate. They think that the U.S. Embassy, and that's, that's we don't know for sure what the U.S. Embassy is going to do. We hear from the Liberians that the U.S. Embassy is driving this investigation. 
it is illegal for the U.S. Embassy to drive this investigation. So I have a hard time believing that because the U.S. Embassy would be absolutely breaking the law. And we have heard so much negative feedback about the U.S. Embassy's behavior during a lot of these adoptions over the last year and a half, two years, that it wouldn't surprise me because of all the other things I've heard, all the other experiences that families have done, and they've made um, complaints to the Inspector General about it at the U.S. I mean, it's a big deal the way that these families have been treated, these children have been treated, the words have been said to them by some U.S. Embassy um, staff and the way that the, the problems that have happened. There's another guy that lived here for five and a half months with custody of his child and was waiting on U.S. Immigration and all of a sudden they let him go. They just said, oh, okay, here you can go. You're approved. They would never give him a reason why it took so long. They just let him go and he just left and took his kid with him and that's good, but it's just kind of, you know, Jeremy was going to work from here, but the, that's a problem too because there's a lot of companies that will not accept internet traffic from Africa no matter who you are. So that's that was a new problem we didn't know we had. There'll be a way around it. We'll see. So there's just a lot going on with, um, this is kind of a, a downer day. Um, luckily I have yarn now so I can put my kids, put my daughter's hair extensions back in. I need to get hers done before we get custody of the other two. I'm really sad. I mean, we're not going to miss another birthday, but I'm just sad for her to live in an orphanage for her eighth birthday when we're right here. Like it just, just drives me nuts. Um, I just feel like this has to be the week where the, we get movement. Her birthday has to, I mean, we well, you can't, you know. And every week we feel like the next week has to be the week. The next week has to be the week. And, I mean, like what if it's not? So, we're again um, at the mercy of the court of public opinion. Like, we don't know. I mean, we feel like some of you guys will help us. Um, and if you can't, that's fine. If you can, that's great. You know, either way. Um, but we need, I mean, we're, the number of days that we can stay in Africa is, is not infinite. And there's not, there's, there's hardly any safe place. We, Jeremy did do some more negotiating and get the Tropicana down a little bit more on price since we've been here for so long. But there's not a lot of safe places you can stay. I mean, there's other places we might be able to stay for a little bit cheaper, but then we, once we have to buy food and get transportation and do all of that, you know, like even today, like our toilet broke and they had to come fix it. So if we were staying in like an apartment, that would probably be like a two week problem, not like a two hour problem. So there's advantages for us being here, but you know, they've gotten it down pretty cheap. They've gotten it down cheaper than any other place I've found that would be remotely safe. So I think they feel for us too. The staff here, they're like, you know, when I came back, they're like, welcome back mommy. And I'm like, thanks. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, I slept today. I fell asleep on the couch today and slept for like another two hours. I slept all night. I just, how many days have I been back? Two nights? Yes. I got back Thursday night. I was here all day. This yes. is the third night. Thursday night, Friday night. So this is the third night, yeah. I'm old. It's hard. It's hard. I think when we first came here, it took like three or four days to get to where you felt normal. Well, yeah, but this was, I mean, I basically was awake for 45 hours, worked like a dog for five days, and then was awake for 37 hours, and then made it back here, so. It's like the amazing race. I should have time-lapsed more of my videos, because when I'm running the time-lapse, I move a lot faster, because I know somebody's watching me. But the carpet thing took me forever because I had to make another trip to Walmart in the middle of the night. Like, I was running because Walmart... You know, in Tennessee, in Nashville, in Tennessee, surrounding counties, Nashville, surrounding counties, Walmart is 24-7. Mm. And Cape Coral, Florida, closes at 11 o'clock. No, there's just too many homeless people. Maybe at the end of this amazing race, we'll just get punched in the stomach. There's homeless people in Tennessee, too. What do you think? We'll just get punched in the stomach at the end of this. Who's going to punch me? I don't know. I'm going to punch back. Somebody. Yeah. So, and the kids have we're really so excited. We, we fly into Tijuana and we can just cross the border. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to be so inconspicuous going across the Mexico border with our th three African descent children, two white <laughs> children, and me and you. Well, I didn't say everybody. I mean, not everybody. That seems too risky. I mean, or you and two little girls. I got this. Trafficking much? Here's my papers. Yeah. <laughs> it's just hard because this is, we're not, when we, were, when we started this process, we were thinking it would be like, <clears throat> I don't know, 10 to 18 months 
because that was and that's not what it says on the website and that's not but that's what we were seeing with other people that we know that's what other people were experiencing who knew our so, country hated librarians so much our country man and us apparently i mean it was nice to be home like it was nice to have <clears throat> the you know it's like back to that saint movie like i'm an american open the gate it's like obviously i can't do that here if you ever watch the saint with uh, elizabeth shu and uh val kilmer yes good movie um but there's a part where she's running and she's like i'm an american open the gate she's yelling and she's running and these russians are like trying to kill her or whatever trying to get her for her mind and she's like you know val kilmer's like blowing up stuff to distract it for her and she's like i'm an american open the gates and they open the gates for her but like it was just it's a dramatic movie it's a movie of course this isn't real life but we should have a we should be safe and supported in our u.s embassy we're not even allowed to make an appointment and walk in the door we, i mean god forbid we have a problem we have to send them an email and they'll get back to us in five to seven business yeah, days maybe uh, if you're running at their, their embassy like, they would say i'm sorry they would know. shoot me no they would say i'm sorry you don't have an appointment you have to come back <laughs> yeah i mean it's not yeah. it's awful but at the same time like when i was at home in the states it, it you know i could get in my car and drive wherever i want to nobody was trying to like stop me with a two by four with nails in it you got to stop. Give me $20. Or you can't go any further. That didn't happen. I got to, I pumped my own gas. They don't let you pump your own gas here. They have gas attendants. And I get it because people would steal their gas. We pump our gas. Yeah. Pump our own gas here. Um, and, and I could order food and it was brought to my door. Or I could like go to the grocery store and get whatever I want. And went to Target, went to Walmart, went to Lowe's. Went to Lowe's some more, Walmart some more. I mean, you know, I could do whatever I wanted to, but like, it's the freedoms were there but like the real freedoms are a little bit vague these days it feels like very much like an anti-christian movement to prevent christian adoptions and like the pro like all the protest all this violent protesting and like against jews like this is not cannot i mean this is the land of the free religious freedom specifically is the reason why my most a big portion came to the u.s for religious freedom it's not to be taken for granted. It's not to be stomped on. Teaching Amen. college students to protest on things that they don't understand anything about. No. Makes me mad. We need more Martin Luther King quotes. Of course, we shot him. <laughs> they say their own government shot him. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. And Kennedy. <clears throat> I just, um, we're not trying to do anything illegal. We're trying to do legal stuff. And... And, it, and I really, I, you know, I really was, like, hyped up about my trip home. And I was like, maybe I'll get there and I'll do all this work and I'll get back. And we'll just have custody and we can move from there and fight from there. Because we just want our kids to live here. I mean, if we can just get custody of them, we can go. We can fix everything else from there probably. You know? At least we'd have some legal rights. Because, like, last night it was raining so hard. It was thunder and lightning. I'm so glad that we got the solar panels. Thank you for those that helped with the solar panels. I'm so glad the solar panels are up and they're not in the dark anymore during these storms. But like, just like they're in, there's no air conditioning. Now they got all the windows shut and the mosquito netting on because it's malaria season. So it's really hot inside. Um, Cause they got to keep all everything closed basically to keep them safe from malaria. And it just, ah, they're, I mean, our kids, because they're sisters, you know, they're kind of sharing a bed, like the bunk beds that are there. I don't have anybody above them, but they're, you know, the siblings share and it's just, hot and gross and raining and loud and thundering and lightning and they don't deserve they're not supposed to be there anymore we're right here so stuff like that just gets me the power went off here for a few minutes and our girls were upstairs you know they're a little a floor ahead, above us there's this is like a really small like it's like like 400 square feet Four square, like it's just like stacked on top of each other, maybe 350 square feet. I don't know. It's not huge, but it is three, three floors. And our American born kids are just hollering, we're good. It'll come back on. You know, they're okay. Jeremy like turned on his cell phone flashlight so they could see. But like our Liberian kids, I mean, there's two caregivers there at night for like 35 kids, 34, 35, 34 kids. And like, you know, that's not hold your hand because you're scared when it's dark. I mean, these kids are in different rooms. Even there's three bedrooms in one of the one of the structures, and then the boys are in the other side. There's two bedrooms over there, so they're spread out. 
So it's a tough thing. So anyways, that's been the sort of press today. Yesterday I was uploading our, our YouTube video at full quality. I don't know if I changed the setting or something when I was at home, but it was like full quality. It took me, it took to a whole day. So this one I'll do a lower quality. It was like dial up. I mean, it was, I was usually sometimes I'll go to sleep and it's still uploading and then I'll wake up and it'll be done and I'll just share it. But this got an AOL connection. This morning I woke up and I was like 65%, huh? Uploaded. Interesting. You know, for the 10 people that watch our videos every day. It's maybe like 4K or something. It's hard. Thanks. I wish we could, I wish we had better news. We don't. I'm sad about running out of our house just because I feel like I'm kind of betraying my kids, my other kids too. I'm just like boxing up all their crap and then they were hoping to be home by now and they're being, they're being good sports about it, but. We all were really. They're being good sports about it. They knew this might happen. I mean, seeing those pictures, I got really homesick, though, for mm -hmm. sure. It doesn't really look like our house, though, after it's so clean. It still looks there. Shiny. It looks like. It's just hard to have, you know. And if we'd have known that it was going to be this hard, we would have rented it before we left and made the big bucks during tourist season. But we didn't know. Yep. So. Um, but now, I mean, honestly, if we're here until Christmas, I won't be that shocked. Hey, welcome to Liberia. You guys okay? No. Who's in the shower? I'm out. Who's in? I can see. Is okay, it, so it is nobody's me. in? Hang on, people. Okay, daddy's coming. So nobody's in? Yeah, so we love it when the power goes out. Hey, oh. But we have, so most of the time when the power was on in Liberia for other people, it could be like days. Like our friends that are renting from a different, at a different place, their, their power will go out. And they don't always, their generator doesn't always kick on. And one time the generator, they didn't come on, their generator's broken or whatever. So they don't have the same. But since we're at like a resort, they rest, you know, everything, they just kick it. They, literally the generator guy has to walk over and push a button. Last night it took a little time, I think, because it was raining so hard. Because they have to go to the place where that parking lot is. The accessory parking lot. That's where the power thing is, what Nelson told me. Yeah, I've seen it. The Jenny guy. We've parked there before, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. So they have to go there. It's a big generator house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you want to make a tax deductible donation or our adoption expenses, we're taking that on our Adopt Together. Um, if you want to <clears> run <throat> a little clothing drive out of your own house, feel free. I'll give you Jennifer's number. She'll set you up, put you on the route. Don't be shy. We need people to pray for our adoption. We need people to pray for our sanity. Pray with dollars. I know. And like without Anna and Paige, I would have never gotten that house done. No, they, they didn't. I nice. knew Jessica would be able to finish up whatever was hard at the end. I knew she would. And I was like, but I, I, I was halfway between like, I didn't call Je Yeah. Oh, there's some down here. Right there. In that bottle. What, this one? This one, yeah. Oh, that's Just add some water to it. We'll get you some more tomorrow. Or Monday. Go upstairs. Okay. Um, Can you open this? Yes. Godspeed. Yeah. I think that's all. New day. Just do it upstairs. Probably won't have any good news until Monday. Um, if you want to buy noonday stuff, do that. It's in the description. Living in Liberia. If we have any. Hmm? So we won't have any new news probably until Monday because Sunday tomorrow Sunday. So the most boring day in Liberia is Sunday. I'm an American open the gates. No. Here it's an I'm an American. Let me punch you in the face. Yeah. I don't feel welcomed. I, f I mean I feel like the Liberians like us, but I feel like they <clears throat> they don't. I don't know. That's the other thing, too, is we don't know who the bad guy is. We don't know who the problem is. Satan himself is lurking in shadows, causing chaos and confusion. Sitting in laps. And. He's like evil Santa. Um, Audrey, Audrey would say that we should pray for the chaos and confusion that he's creating to be bound up and cast into the pit. In Jesus' name. Amen, sister. Audrey always has the right words. Okay, I feel like we've been depressing enough. Bye, friends. Bye.